Hey guys, it's Liam here from Primal Nomad. On this video you're going to be following my journey along with my friend up in Scotland. We're going deep into the Galloway National Park. We're following this river up the side of a mountain range. We've got some quite steep inclines. Looking forward to it. I'm just going to get my boots on now and make sure I've got everything in my pack. Just left the truck now. Walking up the trail, it's a bit of an incline to where we're going to go. Got our packs on, and uh, should be good. I haven't got my main camera out at the moment because it's drizzling, so I'm using my phone one at the moment. So we've just done a fairly hard hike up the side of this river here. There's a little trail, you can see it over there, it's just quite rugged, rock, quite wet as well. You know, we've been hiking up there, just thought we'd stop and have a little breather, take in the sights. We're going to be heading up this way now, we're going to follow the side of this spur, and up at the top there should be a nice pine forest, which we're going to try and set up for the night. springy piece of grass roots here that are suspending me over I don't know how deep of water. Josh, do a jump again. <laughs> Blimey, that's deep. That is deep. We're in a very thick pine forest here. It's incredibly thick. Beautiful landscape, but we're just trying to evaluate the best place to set up camp. Might have to just keep going because this is quite boggy. Set up the tarp now. The ground was really wet where we entered. It just seemed like we wouldn't find anywhere to camp, and you know, we've managed to find two fairly flat spots. You know, we've got the got the river down here. It's lovely. So we've decided to make a stone kind of raised area for the fire. This ground is obviously very, very peaty in these kind of forests, so Josh has just been off collecting a few more. Oh, there, <laughs> there we are. So we've got some nice big rocks. If the kind of scale, that's my hand, and this is a good hand's depth as well. We're not using river stones, they're not wet, they're a little bit damp on the surface, but that would just keep our fire nice and safe. Just got a bit of birch bark here that I collected earlier. Hopefully it will take the spark nice and well and get the fire started. There we go. Yes. The new pair of rod is very shiny. I know man. Slippy. It's maybe a stud of slick there.
we've decided to upgrade the fire situation a little bit. It's obviously suspended on quite hefty rocks but we're going to build it out more this way and build up a kind of surround to stop any falling debris. So we decided to put some stones around here just to shelter any falling embers or ashes or pieces of chard or burning wood from laying on the ground so we should be able to just catch it. We're going to pack it in here with a few more little stones. The fire is nice and warm now. I'm going to think about cooking something up maybe. We're just cooking up a little bit of pasta now. It's uh, cheese and broccoli, is it? Yeah. Cheese and broccoli pasta. So just mix that with water. Got our socks drying out here by the fire. It's a lovely evening. <laughs> really nice with the sound of the waterfall and river down below. This is my Wii Sport 45 pack. What I've done is put the rain cover on the back side so that it covers all my pockets, covers the top, and I can go directly on the ground. Morning guys, it's been raining here since about 3 in the morning, tarp's doing really well though, really dry in my bivvy bag, nice and warm in my sleeping bag as well, I haven't really felt chilly at all. still raining it's not worth me getting out there to try making a fire so I'm just gonna stay here I've uh, split down some pine into these kind of size sticks, nice and dry on the inside. I'm going to keep these in here while I do the rest. Just ensure they keep dry. I'm going to try and feather them. I'm not going to use all of this, I'm going to save a little bit as an emergency. Just looking to catch a spark onto here, get a flame transferred to these feathers and get some of these split sticks burning. If 
put this charred wood here in my previous fire last night and that should catch a bit easier as well. Well guys, that didn't really work, uh, so I'm going to take these and just feather all of them. It's going to be a little while, but it'll be worth it. That's one I've ever done. Oh. Heat up this frying pan and whiz up some bacon. Have to get breakfast. The thing about these thin ones are they heat up incredibly quick. Really thin bacon, so it'll cook quick. Made myself up a really good breakfast. Got some bacon in a wrap. Just cook that on the frying pan like you saw. We're gonna take a stroll down to the river and just eat it with a view.
Bacon always tastes so good when you cook it outdoors. Mm. It's a really nice place to work out there. Saw me obviously getting the fire started today. I had to use feather six there, it just wouldn't catch with anything else. I think that's the key in this kind of environment is split the wood. It might feel really, really damp, but inside is dry. Once I got that going, it was, wasn't that long. That new frying pan I got super thin, so the bacon cooked really thin, really, really quickly. It didn't cook thinly, it cooked quickly. <laughs> Really good. And the best thing is, I could just come down here and do the dishes. How I did it yesterday was we had some pasta. I put the billy can in the water, submerged it. I got some of this really long grass here and I just scrubbed the pot. My mill bank bag. It acts as a filter for my water, although it doesn't purify it. You still have to boil it once you've collected it. Before using them, you have to make sure that the bag is damp. It states here on the back it has a list of instructions. It says soak bag thoroughly before using by squeezing the bag under water. You just saw me do that. What you then do is you fill this as near to the top as you can get it safely. Safety is paramount when collecting water. You don't want to get wet, that runs a risk of hypothermia, especially if you can't get a fire going quick enough. Once you've collected it, you have to let it drain to this line. Once it's drained to this line, can safely start collecting the water. You do that by hanging it into a tree and it drips down into your billy. Can you give this a quick swill out as well? We're going to start by filling up the bag. starting to run out at this point. So we hang it to the field, you put the billy can under here, like so. We've been clearing up all the branches from our firewood around our camp, so there's plenty on the floor. They're a little bit damp, but the heat on this dries them out pretty quickly in bean pine. Once they're dry, they go up. Remember to wash these out once you're done with them. And 
probably give it a good few shakes, squeezes, just to make sure any of the dirt that's inside is out. Now I can let that dry. Now your water is ready to drink. Good rolling boil, even if there is some discoloration. So this is a Douglas fir, sometimes called a dog fir or a Douglas pine. They're a very distinctive tree. On their bark they have small blisters that are packed full of resin. It's got multiple use and it has a very pine, pineapple-y kind of smell. It, it's, it really is lovely and it's very distinctive. Liquid resin in there, sometimes it is hardened and sometimes it is already bleeding out like this. Again you can collect that. It's got great antiseptic properties and it can be used to soothe burns. Also it can be used as a glue or you know for making candles. Pine resin like this is easy to collect. I normally store it inside my tinder pouch. It can be used for fire lighting or to make glues. And it just, just smells lovely. Another good use of pine is in here where the knot meets the tree. This punky wood can be dried. It's full of resin. These can easily be collected on rotting timber. Ooh, there goes my camera, the ground's so soft here. You can actually see a bit of resiny wood in there. Ah, oh, such a pineapple-y smell. We're just about to go for a little hike. Got my day sack on. Josh is just getting ready. We've got some more water filtering there. The water definitely tastes different up here. It feels a lot richer. But we're gonna cross over the river again and head off. Not sure really what we're gonna do but just get a nice hike to see the scenery, see what's about, what it has to offer. Back through the dead marshes guys. <laughs> it's very swamp land. Yeah. You do sink a good few few inches, don't you? Yeah. Hey guys, I don't know if you can see here but there's some deer tracks here here and you can quite clearly actually see the distinguished trail 
follows from right here and it goes on around there. We're going to follow that along the side this back. So it's time to cross this river. Just going to take the boots and socks off. I can't be a dealing with wet socks again. So a simple knot you can do just to tie two items together. Such as boots to go around your neck. Now we can cross the river. It was cold but not that bad. Hey guys, still walking. <laughs> Probably can't see anything, it's pitch black, but we're hiking back to our destination. I've got my head torch, but I'm just conserving battery. I just got to cross over the river where we did it earlier. We we're choosing safety first. We've gone past our camp on the other side of the river, but we didn't know if the river was safe to cross at this time, so we're going to go to the shallow pebble area that you saw us cross earlier. Well guys, it's, uh, it's that time again. Got across the river, it's good. Scratch my foot a little bit, but it'll be fine. Decent. <laughs> it was really, really cold. <laughs> Building the fire up nicely so we've got a good bed of embers to cook some steak and we're going to cook some rice up with it as well. It's been a good day, hey Josh? Certainly has. It's tough there. Yeah. Like traversing all the rivers and <laughs> marshes. <laughs> it's sure was hard. It's not easy, it's an extreme kind of environment really. Extremely wet. Yeah, extremely wet. <laughs> it's so boggy, even now where I'm standing, you near down, you're sinking. You get wet wherever you yeah. are. Pretty much the driest spot, isn't it? I think. Yeah. That we've come across. Apart from <laughs> when the wind blows the rain down. Yes. Yeah. That's about it. Nice, we're really relaxing with the sound of the river and you know the, the only thing is the wood burns so bloody quickly. <laughs> <laughs> it's insane. So we've got the rice in there. Just give it a little bit of a stir because I know these things get hot quick and stick, especially on fires. heating up the oil in the pan. Oh, nice. Put the steak in. the rice boiling. Oh yeah. Let's do that. That's what we're talking about. Mm-hmm. That's so worth it. This is where the good stuff's at. <laughs> Just getting the pan nice and hot. We'll put some water in it. We can use the sphagnum moss mixed with the kind of duff and pine needles as a kind of scourer. It really the braids off. I'm gonna do this now away from the fire. So guys, it's about 11.30 now, I'm going to head off to bed, got to be up tomorrow morning and leave here, so yeah, it's been a great day, got to see quite a lot even though I didn't get much filming done. Good night guys. Morning guys, it's around 7.30, slept from about I don't know, half eleven midnight. 
was good. Slept all the way through. Just been laying here, wait for a little bit. Oh, that's what we want. So, data head back to there. It's been nice. It's been a good insight into what it's like in the uh, wetland forests of Scotland. It's a hard terrain. Done a lot of walking and a lot of physical exertion over the last few days. I mean, the terrain is tough. Especially when you're on the, the kind of marshland, it's really hard to cross. Slept really well though, so I'm just gonna muster up the strength to get up and get the fire going and make some breakfast. Spend the last little bit of time here before we head off. Gonna definitely put some cheese in here. Oh yes. Mm. Good cheese. Good bacon. This is amazing. So it's time to pack up. Got my dry sack here, my sleeping bag. I just stuff it in. Hey guys, just gonna take a trek up this hill before we leave. See the view or rocks. lack of <laughs> some rocks here.
between the pan. <laughs> Oh, I'm going to miss it here. Just scrubbing a pan. Use on these tufts of grass. You can keep dumping it in the river. It acts as a giant scourer. Just going to transfer all these embers now into this pan. Go douse them in the river and scatter them. Get rid of the rocks. So Josh has been scattering the rocks. That are cool. I'm gonna start to have some extra water. One way of course because we're near a river, you can chuck these in. Got rid of the fire, doused all the rocks. We've, uh, you know, just got to put my pack on now. Yeah, campsite's all clear. It's good. There's that hill that we walked up, by the way. Massive. Right. Got across this river, so it's boots off again. <laughs> we've gone for a kind of V handrail system, just so when we're walking across, we can grab each one. Boots around the neck, backpack on, we're gonna cross. Probably not gonna film it guys, so good to see me on the other side. Alright, wish me luck. Oh, well we made it to the other side. Just both drying off our feet, eh? Yeah, good work, dude. Mm, good. Rewarded myself with a bit of beef jerky after crossing that river. Sharing it with Josh of course. We're just gonna walk back through this sodden marsh. We've got quite a walk ahead of us now. Had a really good time. How about you, Josh? It's good. Yeah. Yeah. Loved it. Oh yeah. Great. All the marsh bashing. <laughs> marsh bashing. <laughs> right. See you later, guys. So back of the car now. Got it all started up. Oh, gonna make the eight and a half hour trip home. Well, guys. Thanks very much for watching. See you soon.